Today, as you will have heard, is the feast of Saints Philip and James. Once again, two saints are, are given a kind of a condominium on the same day. And I should come up with some sort of secret hand signal by now to save myself the trouble of saying we know very little about them. Unfortunately, these very much inner circle members of the, of the group that followed Jesus are nonetheless pretty obscure to us. In the case of James, we're not even exactly sure which James it is. There are several that are mentioned. This one is sometimes called James the Less to distinguish him from James the Greater who has his feast day in July. But we don't know exactly whether this James that's mentioned here is to be associated with James who was the leader of the church that's mentioned in Acts, if he wrote the letter of James, if he was in some way otherwise involved in, in things that we hear about. We don't know which James he is. At least Philip gets a speaking part. He gets a, even a little less than St. Thomas does, but at least he gets a line in the gospel today. Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. This immediately brings to mind other weird places where people say, well, just show us what it is and bring it to us and we'll be satisfied. I'm thinking, um, beginning with uh, the movie Monty Python and the Holy Grail, where some of their opponents at one point say, bring us a shrubbery. And it, you know what they meant, but you can't do it because a shrubbery isn't really a thing. It's, it's, a, it's more conceptual. I mean, it's, it's made up of individual shrubs, I suppose, but you can't show someone a shrubbery or bring it anywhere. If you want something that's a little more high-minded, perhaps, imagine someone saying, show us efficiency or show us creativity. I mean, we know what they are. We know that they exist but we only ever see them in the things that they, they produce, the fruit, the, 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 the things that they uh, throw off from themselves in the, the course of being what they are. That, I think, is what's going on in this question that, that uh, Philip throws out to Jesus. Show us the Father. And Jesus is very kind and doesn't come back at him any more harshly than he does. But in reality, that's what the problem is. It, to say, show us God we know God not by looking directly at God ever. We're told by some of the prophets that to look directly at God is death, but rather by the things that are produced by living a godly life, by the action of God, by the, the creativity, the, the overflowing goodness of God in the world. And that's why Jesus, I think, is a little bit frustrated, I guess is a good word, with Philip, but why perhaps we should have a little bit of sympathy for Philip. He's been following Jesus all this time, day in, day out, for some period of time, several years, it seems. And in that time, he has seen some of the, 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 the big stuff. He has seen Jesus raising the dead and feeding thousands of people, but presumably Jesus wasn't doing that every day. That wasn't his routine. And therein lies the problem. If we keep with the, the, the fruit idea from earlier, we go along looking for those watermelons, the watermelons of raising the dead and feeding huge numbers of people, while in the, me in the meantime, we're completely surrounded by the blueberries of everyday life. Jesus was showing his followers God in his daily life every minute of it by his patience, by his gentleness, by his avoidance of the sins of envy and despair. They must surely have been tempting in the life that Jesus was leading, all of those things that could so easily have led him astray, and yet he lived a perfectly godly life. If nothing else, that should have been encouragement to Philip, and indeed should be encouragement to us. And it is in those little things, the, 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 the things that we perhaps even take for granted in living a godly life, that God is both revealed to us and is manifested in us by our patience, by our gentleness, by our avoidance of despair, by our steadfastness in trying to follow the way of God. We are, in fact, being shown God in our own lives, and we are being shown God in the lives of those around us. Perhaps that even gives us a little more sympathy for Philip and James, these people about whom we know so little. Maybe they weren't the ones who were doing the, the huge, obvious things in this world. 
but who nonetheless were showing God to the world in the way they lived their lives humbly and faithfully. If that's all we have to do, then perhaps we're in good company even with the obscure and little-known saints of God. Amen.